Welcome to Alivix. This video explains how to properly build Alivix objects and also place them into groups to greatly improve their ability to get a correct match when the interface changes. Hi everyone, Charles here for Alivix. Today I'd like to elaborate on best practices for selecting on-screen objects in a way that will ensure your Alivix test cases don't break. In other words, they'll be more robust over the long term. Obviously, if your interface that you're monitoring changes drastically, you'll probably have to make a completely new test case. But what usually happens instead is an interface will change gradually, a little bit here, a little bit there, over time. If you do just the bare minimum, you'll likely have to rebuild your test cases for each of these small changes. It turns out there's a right way and a wrong way to build your test cases. And learning the right way now means you won't have to spend as much time later on. Real quick, let's look at some knowledge you may have already picked up from our previous Alivix operations videos. To get Alivix to recognize and interact with an image or a box or a piece of text, you draw a selection rectangle around that target. A selection can be any size, and you can have up to four of them in a group, where you can tell which group it is by the color of the selection. Each selection also has a larger rectangle around it called the region of interest. What Alivix does is it tries to match this selection anywhere within its own region of interest, while the regions in a group must be in the same position relative to each other, but only within that group, not the regions in other groups. Groups are independent of each other in terms of position, but they're matched in the order they're listed in the component tree. Alivix gives you a few helpful options you can use to expand the region of interest, like dragging its edges or right-clicking on an edge to expand it to infinity in its direction. Both selections and groups are tools that can help you whenever there are minor variations on the screen, so you don't even have to update your Alivix test case at all. Let's look at two examples, one where a subwindow is resized and then where a subwindow is repositioned. In both cases, let's say a window has popped up for a task, we've done the task and we're ready to close the window. When a window is resized or repositioned between one run of Alivix robot and the next, then a properly robust test case will still work despite those changes. If it's not built following best practice, you risk breaking your test case and thus having gaps in your monitoring data and having to fix the test case before you can continue monitoring. Let's take a look then at our first example where a pop-up window isn't the same size as it was when we created the test case. This can happen when applications remember the size of your windows after the last session but also with menus, tables, forms, and anything else that changes size. Here's our example from before where we've defined two selections to close a window. As long as the window always has the same size, you can get away with the default selections and regions of interest. But suppose for some reason the system opens this window wider than it did back when we created the test case. Now our selection will no longer match what Alivix sees. What we need to do is tell Alivix where it can find the target in relation to the anchor, regardless of any resizing. The answer here is to change the region of interest so that it covers the possible areas where the target can be found. Again, the inner box is the selection target, the thing we're looking for, and the outer box is the region of interest, or the area where we're happy if the target is anywhere within that. We can resize the region of interest by dragging it using the left mouse button in any direction though here we don't need to worry about moving it up or down. You can also right-click on an edge to move it to the farthest edge of the screen in that direction. If we make the region of interest larger, the window can be a different size and we will still match against the target. Now, all these selections are within a single group, and therefore a single application window. You can see the actions along the top lot of the window itself. To close it, we only need Alivix to click on the close window control that's off to the right of the main window icon. But what if instead we need an anchor somewhere else that's outside the window? Then we'll have a problem if later on the window is repositioned to some other place on the screen. The answer is to use two separate groups, one for the main anchor and one for the smaller window and its controls. So in the second example, we have an anchor on the main window and two selections with their ROIs on the window we want to close. What will happen if the window is now in an unexpected place? Exactly, the two subcomponents and the window won't line up anymore with the anchor. That's what groups are for, to recognize multiple sets of selections compared to other sets. So let's reset our test case, choose the anchor and some other component, and then press the 2 key to switch to group number 2. 
Now the elements of the subwindow will be drawn in green, indicating they have to be relative to the other green components, but not to the red ones. Of course, you can use both of these techniques at the same time, allowing the window to be both resized and repositioned, but still be findable by Alivix. While we're talking about groups, I also want to say something about the ordering in the component tree at the right. The top to bottom order tells Alivix the sequence to try to match each component. But if everything matches, then that sequence is also the order in which the interactions will occur. So say we add another component to our second group, and we also want to click on that component. What will happen if we leave our tree the way it is? The first click will close the subwindow, and so the subwindow won't be there when we click on the other action. But we can reorder the two clicks just by dragging one above the other. So there you have it, two best practices that will keep your Alivix test cases from breaking, even if the interface you're monitoring is changing slightly. So remember, when you're working within a single group, expand the region of interest so that the feature you need to match is somewhere within that region of interest. And when two sets of matches can be in any position relative to each other, use a separate group for each set. That's it. Now you're up to speed on some best practices for Alivix. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Don't forget you can check out the Alivix website, blog, and user guide at these links. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell to be notified when we post new videos. And of course, we read all the comments you post below.